Yes. The 1991 Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody was set up to bridge a gulf in how Indigenous and non-Indigenous people were being treated in the justice system. Its main task was to answer why so many Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders were dying after being arrested. Concern bubbled over in the 1980s when 99 Indigenous people died in prisons, police stations and juvenile institutions in a period of less than 10 years. There were both males and females, their ages and causes of death varied, but what they all had in common was their aboriginality and the fact that they died prematurely. Details about the circumstances of death were often sketchy, so there was growing suspicion particularly in the aboriginal community that many of those people had been victims of foul play, killed by violent police or prison officers. After nearly four years of investigating, the commission declared there was no foul play. I reckon he fell backward, but he not not on the concrete or something. I put him in the cell, separately, and, and that's where they probably were starting and punching him with this and that. We don't know it, but he's singing up for help there. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my brother and wish he was still with me. There will be a unreserved apology to, to the family, and that's just the beginning. It's been been hot too long, you know, 30 years, too long for me. But I, that apologies, it's all right for the government, but I want to see them, cops. They just come see me themselves. Well, I've been covering the story of John Pat's death for 30 years now, and it doesn't get any less painful every time I think about it. It led to the most searching inquiry into Aboriginal police relations in Australian history. The two and a half year, $40 million Royal Commission into Aboriginal cell deaths. And what was so appalling was that um, of the 99 deaths examined, 33 in West Australia, no one was held responsible for any of them. We need to implement the recommendations, all of the recommendations of the Royal Commission. Over 20 years later, they still haven't been implemented. It's still unfair, there's no justice, it's not tailor made for my people. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here. It's Lavender here, and today I'm back with another true crime case. Today I'm doing the true crime case, the murder of John Pat, an Aboriginal Australian man in Australia by the Australian police story. So let's get started in this video. So yeah, so I first came across a story in my, I think it was in my, uh, Why We Should Abolish the Police, uh, video. And also, I think in my, uh, the history of genocide by colonizers, uh, like the, uh, Aboriginal, like, Australian genocide video or whatever. So let's get started into this video. So yeah, so this case has been featured in a number in TV and media. It's a very, very known case in Australia. It was featured in Black Death in Custody. Black Death is an ABC4 coroner's investigation into the deaths of John Pat and three other Aboriginal men in police custody in the area in Western Australia. The program helped crystallize the growing unease uh, about Black Deaths in custody and participated the setting of a setting up of a royal commission that investigated more than a hundred Aboriginal deaths in custody all throughout Australia. At the time, the broadcast, Western Australian police rejected the documentary, claiming it was biased, unfair, and uh, untrue reporting, and it was like a whole lie, and none of this was happening, and banned ABC reporters from their briefings. His death was one of several indigenous deaths in custody that caused an uproar among the indigenous Aboriginal Australia population who believed, quite rightly, that the police were unfairly targeting, treating uh, Aboriginal people using excessive force and ultimately causing the deaths of a disproportionate number of Indigenous people in the area in Australia and police custody. So let's get started into the story. So yeah, so the background of the victim. So John Peter Pratt, a Aboriginal youth, was born on October 31st, 1966 at Railbourne, Western Australia. His mother was Mavis Pat and his father was Lynn Wally, who were married under the traditional Aboriginal law. He was the eldest of three children. He lived with his family at the Mount Florence Pastel Station until the age of nine. He attended the local high school for two years, then 
briefly worked as a station hand, and, but was mostly unemployed thereafter. The reservoir closed in 1975 and the community was forcefully relocated to the Aboriginal village. A state housing commission project, families compelled to live side by side with people of other indigenous cultures, fragmented and the village became a place of high tensions in the area. Alcohol abuse was widespread and the police conducted frequent patrols in the area. On leaving school, Pat worked for two months at a station hand on Pyramid Station. Back at Relborn and unemployed, he was soon abusing alcohol. At age 14, he was found guilty of assaulting a police officer, and at age 15, he was convicted again for the same offense. He was brought before local court on several occasions on charges of relating to liquor. So, on to the story. So, on September 28, 1983, Pat and other Young Aboriginal people engaged in a bar fight with Aboriginal police aside and four off-duty police officers outside the Relborn Hotel. Pat was reported injured in the fight, striking his head on the road and being kicked in the head and face along with four Aboriginal men involved in the brawl. John Pat was thrown into a police van. He was taken around the corner to a small stone police lockup. A witness later told the Royal Commission that they witnessed uh, the man were being dragged from the police van and savagely beaten by the police officers. He was arrested and taken to lockup where he died soon after of head injuries, hem hemorrhaging and tearing of the brain. Pat had also suffered two broken ribs and a torn aorta, which is in the heart, in a juvenile police cell. Subsequent medical evidence indicated that this fatal injury is likely to have been caused by the counter coup of the back of the head hitting the flat surface. The separate impacts of punches and kicks were later discounted by the Royal Commission Elliot Johnson. A coronal inquest was conducted on October 30th, 1983, at which five police officers declined to give evidence. However, the, the five police officers refused to give evidence, but they submitted statements, their own statements, saying that there was no excessive force used that night and the incident took place. The coroner, Mick McCann, committed the five officers for trial in the Supreme Court on a charge of unlawful killing manslaughter. The five police officers were tried on counts of manslaughter in the Supreme Court on May 1984 before a all-white jury. The trial lasted for just over three weeks. The jury retired at 12.15 p.m on May 24th, 1986, and at 7.15 that evening, 7.15 p.m., it returned its deliver its verdict. The jury, the all-white jury, acquitted every officer that was involved, you know, in this case. The five officers were immediately reinstated and got to go back to their job, and no further charges were considered against them, which was described by Royal Commissioner as the most unsatis unsatisfactory state of affairs. There was evidence tending to establish that assaults had taken place at the station. The officers, or some of them, were clearly suspected by their superior officer who had been involved in assaulting Aboriginal prisoners, yet they were reinstated to duty without any further investigation to the case. The not guilty verdict had always been the bitterly disputed by the Aboriginal community in the area and human rights advocates, and Pat's death is com commercially, annually, in parts of Australia. They remember it in Australia in 2013 on the 30th anniversary of John Pat's death. The WA Parliament issued a unreserved apology to his family. However, Missy Pat John's younger sister made clear she'd rather have seen the officers responsible, you know, be thrown in prison and serve time, as they were the ones who needed to apologize, and they never did. The officers' acquittal led to widespread outrage that sparked a long-term campaign calling for the investigation into the deaths of Aboriginal people while being detained in the police. Uh, custody. The Royal Commission investigated the deaths of 99 to 100 Indigenous people in custody around the country for over a 10-year period in the area, including the death of John Pat. It tabled its final report on April 15, 1991, with a list of 339 recommendations, most of which have never been acted upon because they don't care again. Key recommendations included number 87, which states that people should only be arrested when there is no other way exists for dealing with a problem. While the 
92nd recommendation says imprisonment should only be utilized only as a sanction of last resort. However, 28 years on after this incident, the percentage of the adult prisoner population compromised of Aboriginal people and other Islander people has almost doubled from the 14% it was in in 1991 to 27.5% of the incarcerated population in June last year, which is really high because uh, Aboriginal people don't make up that big of a population in Australia, so that's a really high number, you know, because of the colonization and all that and the Aboriginals, you know, I mean, yeah. And then Rose, Rose Nanny, Pat, who never knew her cousin, but his death was a stone cell in Western Australia as remote. A region continues to have a huge impact on her life. She is quoted saying, it's always inside of you. It's something that scars you for life. It's always inside you like a scar, she told The Point. It's something we're never going to forget about. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye guys, see you next